Hey guys, and uh, I'm so excited to announce that my intermediate auto hotkey course is finally on Udemy. Um, I submitted it a, a while ago, but it, it took a while to get it get it passed because everyone's publishing their stuff. Um, everyone's home apparently, and uh, this course it you know it goes to the next level past my intro to auto hotkey course, and um, takes a deeper dive into real real things that are I think are are more likely to be you know helpful for the average person. The other one was just kind of getting your feet wet into it. Um, here the intro I discuss you know my background why you should learn on a hotkey installing auto hotkey uh, and studio which is what I still use and recommend for editing auto hotkey code. Um, and then we look at the by default settings you know both I, well, the ones I recommend the ones that are much more I would make sure you have critical levels and the other ones that are optional based on depending on on what you're going to be doing with your code. Um, also so I walk through how to set up a hotkey in there for helping reload and, and working faster and smarter. Um, and they really help me when I'm developing code, having my stuff in there, it also helps separate your stuff. Uh, the uh, There's a lot of different types of send. So um, it's one of those things like you really want to learn that depending on what you're doing, there's various ways to go about sending uh, information to the computer. Uh, using set timers, which are a great way to get around um, multi-threading issues. So sometimes you'll have a script that just stops and locks up and a set timer is a way to fake multi-threading. So it's it's a really good, it's not, a, I don't even, there's a, a, you know, really cool stuff you can do with them. Um, and so I highly recommend you check out set timers if you haven't used them. Uh, the reading and writing any files or initialization files, those are great ways to store user settings on what they've, um, are current, how they're, you know, configured their script and uh, the things that you want to keep remembering when I come back into it, and it's it's a great. They're very easy to use. I think they're highly underrated, and it's a it's a great easy way to save settings um, and read them in um, and understand that structure uh, on how you want it. The um, reading, or oh, sorry, the working with the registry. This is I was a little hesitant to put this in this course because. If you mess up your registry, you can lock up your computer. So it, it's the actual topic of auto hotkey working with your registry is pretty simple. However, uh, working with your registry is dangerous. So make sure you can back it up. There's ways I didn't cover that, but the, Google that there's ways to back it up. And then it's really cool because you can add stuff to the registry. You can save your settings there if you want to. Um, and that way it doesn't have it in a local file, but also you can see like how programs and where they've installed change their default behaviors. It's a really great way to control other programs or see if it's installed and then you know use that logic to do something from it um, controls are a phenomenal way to control programs now granted they're often older programs so like for instance word here with this ribbon uh, that uses a different technology we can't connect to uh, most of the controls like that in in word and office nowadays but a lot of us are at work and have these older programs that have controls and if you have controls available to you it is an amazing way to connect a program so i have over 40 videos walking through each one of the control um commands in auto hotkey in it's just a really, really high, reliable. It doesn't get interrupted by the human using the computer. So it's a really great way to connect to a program. Um, that one, it, it's, it's, I really recommend you play with controls. They're very, very powerful. The select menus, I threw it in here just because it's another way to connect to an older program, right? They have the older menus like you see in Notepad with the little things across the top. They look like this, but these are, these aren't actually menus. Um, and, uh, it's another great way to control an older program. Um, and then I take a deep dive into, I covered five here, five looping types in auto hotkey, um, the basic while until parsing text is a lot of fun um, and working with files and folders. Now that complements the stuff I did in the intro course on that one. And, uh, but there's a, you know, there's even a couple more I didn't cover. Um, one, which I'll get to here in a second is uh, the, uh, in arrays, you know, we work with simple arrays, which is just think of them as like a list of things versus associative arrays, which is, I, I like to think of as like a phone book for every, you know, phone number, which is your index and it's unique. There is a given person or something. Um, and, uh, so I cover how to work with both of these in, in my approach, what I realized once it really sunk in and I said, Hey, you know what? If I think of both of them as key value pairs, even though they're not, but if you conceive them that way and you understand in the simple array, the index is the key and the value is your, um, uh, your value the, yeah, the, it, um, it's, it's easier to conceive of it. Now, of course, things can shift around in the simple array, but it's just, for me, it really helped me grasp that. 
And, uh, and yeah, I have over five hours of course time in this program. Um, I think for the price, um, and I'm, I'll get to here in a second. It's a, it's a great deal. It's a great thing for, I think, a lot of, of you guys that are watching my videos. Um, this one is much more, I think, going to help you because the vast majority of people that are studying my stuff on auto hotkey, they're not like right out of the bin, know nothing about AutoHotKey. This to me, you could either have, make sure you work through that uh, intro to AutoHotKey course or have used AutoHotKey for like six months, maybe three to six months. And then you probably have enough uh, idea to jump into this course and really take a deep dive. So let's get into uh, some of the uh, ways to buy it. Um, so if you go to this URL, um, or you can you can go to this one here on my background here, to you to me, you'll see that they have the same link and this gets you a discount code of $12.99 um, I'll try to keep this updated every month. It has to. They only give you coupon codes. They don't last forever, so I have to go re-updating it. So if it's not valid, let me know and I'll I'll go update it. But it, um, you can get it for twelve ninety nine, and uh, and also this um, up until June first. So you got a uh, what twenty? I'm sorry, no, I can't do math while I talk. Eleven days or twelve days, something like that. Um, if you sign up to my alerts, then you'll have a chance. I'm giving away ten free access. Uh, to the intermediate course. So, um, and there's not a lot of subscribers right now. So right now, I think I have around 100. So right now you have a chance of one in 10 of winning. Um, and if, by the way, if you happen to buy my course and then win, I'll refund you the money um, for the course, or you can just ask for a refund either way. Um, but but so you'll, you'll get the money back if you buy it now and get it started. Uh, but what I wanted to point out here is uh, if you don't understand how Udemy works and stuff, and I'm not knocking Udemy, I know they got to make their money, but look at these top two examples here. When when someone finds a course on Udemy, like if it's an affiliate link, this is what the person paid, right? Whoever bought this course paid uh, $10.59. I get $2.50, right? So I'm getting like 25% of what that one. And here's another one right about that ratio of from the ad program. Someone paid four. And why are they? why is someone paying $4 for my course? Right? How is that possible? Um, I, I have no idea. Well, I got a dollar. Woo! I mean, I'm, I'm not knocking. I'll take the dollar. But still, it's uh, ridiculous. So um, if you buy my course for $12.99, I'll get like this example here where someone paid $14.20. See how it says your promotion, meaning my promotion. Um, I got $12.60 out of it. I didn't do the math, but I'll bet you that's 97% of what you pay. And I know you know, you guys want me to make more courses and more, even the free videos. And by me making money off of this and the more money I make, the more free time, I don't have to do other work. Um, and so I can make more stuff and even free stuff. So if you could go to um, use this URL or go to, to my site up over here and get the links, if you, especially if you want the uh, intro to auto hockey or hot strings. And, and again, hot strings, if you're not using hot strings, um, Stop what you're doing now and start using them, even if you don't take my course, right? I really don't care that much about it. I'm not pushing that. What I do want to push is the use of hot strings. They are by far the lowest hanging fruit for each and every one of you guys and everyone on a Windows computer to level up like that. I mean, it's it's so fast that you you begin working smarter, not harder. It's such an easy thing to do. And here's the, here's the big key is don't, don't add 50 of them at one time. Add one to two a day at the most because you got to start remembering, you know, the, the hot string forum. And when you add too many, it gets, becomes overwhelming. But once you get used to them, it's an amazing time saver. So anyway, that's my pitch. Please uh, check it out. Um, and, and again, sign if you sign up, you'll have a chance to win this course for uh, for free. I uh, hope you like the course. After you've taken any of my courses, please give me an evaluation. You know, review the course, make it honest. Just remember, you know, I purposely leave in my goof ups because one thing I don't like about like Lynda.com courses is that in them, everyone is perfect and never see anybody screw up. And in mine, I like to demonstrate that even people who've been using it for a while, they mess up. And you know what? You need to figure out how to troubleshoot. And it's one of the things, you, it's really hard to teach troubleshooting because it applies logic in your brain. Uh, but you just got to start playing around with it and testing stuff, right? So um, let me know what you think. Looking forward to hearing from you and check out the course. Cheers.